welcome to the OptaPlanner example of project job scheduling. So project job scheduling is a use case, a planning use case, which you'll find in many uh, manufacturing companies, as also as anyone dealing with projects uh, might encounter this problem. So here's an example uh, where we're going to produce uh, two books, so book one and book two. And to produce these books, for each book, we'll, uh, we'll produce 10,000 copies, of course, right? So uh, now to produce these books, so let's take a look at producing what, what involves producing book one. We will first need to do a design, to design the layout, the cover, and so forth. And this will take our designer two days. So you can see on the 1st and the 2nd of November, we'll, we'll design the book. Now, as soon as the uh, design is ready, we can start producing it. Uh, but no earlier. So as soon as the design is ready, we will start producing the cover uh, and that will take us three days, uh, 10,000 covers, and we will uh, pr start producing the pages. So 10,000 times we will produce 400 pages per book. And that will take us four days. Basically it's 100 uh, pages uh, per day uh, for 10,000 copies. Now, um, the thing is we can do these two, two things in parallel. We can assign one worker to do the cover and one worker to pages. And then by day seven, both of these things are done and we can assemble uh, the cover in, into the pages and that will take us another day. So after seven days, um, the uh, book one has been produced completely. Now book two is pretty much the same thing, except for the fact that we have 500 pages per book. So it takes a day longer to create the pages. It, take five, it takes five days instead of four days, days to uh, produce all the pages. So you'd, you'd expect that we could do this in eight days, right? Because theoretically, the, because we could do the other one in seven days, this one will ju just take one day longer. But that is, that is indeed the critical path. But um, the problem is that our resources are limited. In this case, I've only looked at the human resources and we have uh, one designer and two workers available in, in our manufacturing plant. So um, as soon as project one star, as, the, uh, as the first project, so book one starts, we are using this, uh, this designer. So he's, he's unavailable the first and the second day to work on the second book. So the second book can only start uh, on the third day because uh, if it starts sooner, there is no, there is no designer to, to do the designing work. As a result of which, we already have two days of delay in the second book, right? Because it can only start on the third day. Now on the fifth day, the, the, the design is ready and we could start producing the, the cover and the pages, but our workers are still busy. Both of our workers are still busy. Uh, one is working on the cover and the other one is working on the page of the first book. As a result of which we have to wait yet another day before we can do anything on the second book. Um, then one of the workers is available, the first one, and we can st uh, start, and he can start making the pages. Of course, we choose the pages and not the cover because the pages will take longest. So we will start with the longest job first, right? And then. Um, a day later, so the, the 7th of November, uh, the, the, the other worker is available, but he immediately, immediately is unavailable again because he uh, needs to assemble the, the first book. So we can uh, we can start distributing that. And um, when he's available again, we can, uh, he can start doing the cover for the second book. And then at the day 11, after day, and then we do the assembly at day on day 11. So after 11 days, uh, the second book is done. Um, so as a result of which, um, the second book took quite a bit longer because of our resource or our constrained resources, right? Because we don't have unlimited resources. We have to do with the workers that we got. Now, uh, what can we choose? We can choose when we start a job. We could say, I'm going to wait, for example, um, instead of doing the blue job here, I'll, I'll start with the yellow job. So the cover job at day six, and I'll do the blue job later. So that, that's what, what we can play with trying if we want to optimize this, right? But there's another thing we can play with. Each of these jobs has an execution mode. And uh, for now, I've ju just shown one execution mode, but we could example, for example, for the design mode, we could say, uh, let's take for this one, we could say instead of uh, using our internal designer, which we have to pay anyway, we could use an external cons consultancy um, designer. 
and um, as a result of which we wouldn't be using our uh, designer uh, our internal designer resource. Of course, we will have to pay for that. We'll, so we will be using one of our other resources, financial budget. Um, so uh, there's a downside, of course. Uh, but the nice thing about this is that th then we can actually start uh, producing, start the design of book one, uh, of book of the second book on the first day. So it, it would actually start earlier. Um, the problem is, of course, that when, once we get to day three, then we can start producing the second book. But again, both of our workers will be busy on the first book, so there won't be any benefit in, in doing that. However, um, let's suppose there's an execution mode where we can actually do the design in only one day, where we pay for, let's say, three external con uh, consultancy designers, and they do the, the job in one day instead of two days. So, so faster. If we would do that for the first job, uh, for the book, uh, for the first book there, then, then that would actually be interesting because that would mean that the, the workers can start a day earlier. So the first book would be finished uh, a day earlier and also the second book would be finished a day earlier. Of course, three ex external consultancy designers will, will be, will have a certain price and they won't be cheap. So, um, so again, the, this depends on your score function, right? Um, what do you want to optimize? And uh, these score functions can, 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 can get pretty complex, of course, right? But of course, Auto Planner is there uh, to, meet your, uh, to, to meet your needs so you can scale, uh, so you can model your score function as your business requires, okay? So um, now let's take a look at the implementation behind this uh, in Auto Planner. So here's uh, the example um, uh, shown in Opto Planner. And in this case, we have two projects, the, the red and the blue project. And we, uh, you can see we have about 10 jobs on each of them. And uh, of course, what we, what we, and in, in this case, as it's defined by the, the MISTA challenge, which is in a research competition, um, they defined this problem basically, and they, they, they gave us the data sets and so forth. Um, they said, okay, you need to make sure that all of your, uh, that you, don't use more resources than needed. That no job starts earlier than all of its uh, pre, uh, pre uh, all the jobs that need to be finished before it are are finished. Um, and uh, last but not least, um, we need to uh, minimize the the the, uh, the 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 length of each project. Project. So, for example, the first project takes 11 days, and the second one takes uh, 23 days. Although it only starts to fourth, so it takes uh, actually 19 days, right? And um, we're going to compare that to the critical path. So the critical path is a theor theoretical minimum that a project can do. And in this case, apparently one of the two projects takes longer uh, than the critical path. I think it's the second one takes one day longer. And you can see that that's the middle number here. So the first number is the number of hard constraints were broken, you know, resource where we're using too many resources, which we don't have. Uh, the second one is the project delay. And the that last one is actually the total uh, the, the total ending day, but that's that's not that important. We're completely focused on the on the second number, getting that down. So getting our job, uh, our our projects out as soon as possible, and minimizing the sum of, of that uh, over uh, entirely. Okay, so let's take uh, a little bit of a bigger project. Here's one with uh, four projects, actually, sorry, five projects, and about over 50 jobs in total. So let's take a look what happens here so once we start solving this. And you, what you can see is at the bottom, you can see the number actually going down. So uh, our project delay is actually uh, decreasing. Uh, or uh, at the first thing Opto Planner came up with took about a delay of about 400 days. Uh, and now we're already at only a delay of 78 days. Um, and we're getting closer to a better and better score, right? As we give it more and more time. And you can see as that the, up, the, the solution changes quite a bit. He's moving uh, the, the jobs back and forth, figuring out which one to do first and so forth. You can see that the red project st stops for pretty early. And the green project is basically being delayed uh, for the others to finish because it's being delayed and only really starts here. Although here's this, here's it's when it's available, when we can start working on it. We only really start working here. And, and that's why it takes almost 50 days uh, to finish. Um, but uh, this is a good solution, right? Okay. So uh, let's load a bigger one, uh, E10. This one has over 300 jobs. 
uh, 10 projects, I believe. Yes. So um, and as you can see, uh, it becomes is, uh, you can see that, that the number of days we're over uh, we're over the critical path is, is, is decreasing. We started at 5,000 days, we're now at 4,000 days and so forth. Um, and you can see that he's he's moving the jobs very differently. He's not showing when, when the execution modes change, but he's constantly changing them uh, um, to make sure that he's, he's, that he's not using resources. Uh, uh, he's using the best resource available, right? So um, not the best resource available, but um, in general, so they're the most efficient uh, resource uh, for this pro uh, for each job, right? Um, okay, so that's it. Uh, thank I'm going to stop this. So thanks for watching, and um, if you want to learn more about OptoPlanner, just go to the OptoPlanner website, uh, which is optoplanner.org. Um, and I also need to thank um, Lukas Petr Petrovicki, who's actually done most of this, uh, who's actually contributed most of this uh, implementation of this example, actually. Uh, and of course, the, the MISTA organizers for defining the, the problem in the first place. Thanks for watching. Bye.